Welcome back to Anne of Green Gables. We are on chapter two. Matthew Cuthbert is surprised. We are on page nine. Your words are sundry, ungangly, jauntily, wincy, vivacity, deferred, orphan, scope for the imagination, rose window, cathedral, wrap, Queer. Turn the page. Amber. Erythral. Ruminated. Rapture. Waif and Revelation. Ready? Page nine. Page nine. Here we go. Oh, no. You don't have. Okay. Here we roll. Matthew Cuthbert is surprised. So remember, Matthew Cuthbert is Marilla's brother. Matthew Cuthbert and the sorrel mare jogged comfortably over the eight miles to Bright River. It was a pretty road running along between snug farmsteads with now and again a bit of balsamy fir wood to drive through or a hollow where wild plums hung out their filmy bloom. The air was sweet with the breath of many apple orchards, and the meadows sloped away in the distance to horizon mists of pearl and purple, while the little birds sang as if it were the one day of summer in all the year. Matthew enjoyed the, the drive in his, after his own fashion, except during the moments when he met women and had to nod to them, for in Prince Edward Island you are supposed to nod to all and sundry you meet on the road, whether you know them or not. What do you think sundry means? Why not sundry? I like Because Miss Richardson's book and she decided to be a smarty pants and highlight it. Oh, don't highlight it. I did it. It's my book. Not the school's book, my book. I don't highlight the school book, do I? No. Sundry, what do you think sundry means? Stranger. That's a stranger. Good guess, I'll take two more. Not women, good guess. Not ladies. So sundry means includes... Many different kinds. Includes many different kinds. Okay. So it's mm, Let's look at it again. So it says, um, Matthew enjoyed the drive after his own fashion, except during the moments when he met women and had to nod to them. For in Prince Edward Island, you are supposed to nod to all and sundry, include many different kinds you meet on the road. So whether you know the person, it would be kind of like if you're driving down the road. Now, if we're driving down the road, are we going at a speed that you can necessarily recognize someone? No, depending on if you're going on the expressway, you're doing 75 or could be up to 75. Excuse me. Okay, yeah, that, I was going to say that, but I wasn't going to say that. My friend said faster because some people drive faster than 75 on an expressway. Or you could be doing 55 on like Washington. Now, if you're in town and you're doing 25, can you notice the people that you're passing? Sure, if you're paying attention. So if you notice the people you're passing or you know their vehicle, you might sundry, you might nod to them or wave to them. Hey, that's my friend. That's well, Mr. DeRosia. Hi, Mr. DeRosia. Now, now, so that's sundry. Now, Matthew is shy. He's painfully shy, which means... He's super uncomfortable, especially around women. This is going to come up over and over and over again. 
So he's going to do some pretty silly stuff because he's very shy with women. So there's a particular scene I'm thinking of, and it's pretty funny because... Well, and, 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 and you don't think? I think it is. Oh, it's good. And there's an Anne of Avonlea. And I might, if we have enough people pick Anne of Green Gables, we might even watch Anne of Avonlea. Oh, oh, it's pretty long. Um, So sundry to you meet, and sundry you meet on the road, whether you know them or not. Matthew dreaded all women except Marilla and Mrs. Rachel. He had an uncomfortable feeling that the mysterious creatures, women he's talking about, were secretly laughing at him. He may have been quite right in thinking so, for he was an odd-looking personage with an ungainly figure and long gray, iron gray hair that touched his stooping shoulders and a full soft brown beard. So he's got a full beard, which he had worn ever since he was 20. In fact, he had looked at 20 very much as he looked at 60, lacking a little of the grayness. What do you think ungainly means? Did you lose it? Okay. Not strong. That's not necessarily a bad... That's a good guess, but that's not what we're looking for. Hmm. Close. So ungangly means clumsy. Have you ever seen the people that are really tall and really thin and they look kind of like they're... Clumsy. Don't point fingers. Jeez. Clumsy. I tell you right now, Miss Richardson is quite clumsy too. So clumsy. Um, for he was an odd-looking personage with a clumsy figure and long iron gray hair. Um, when he reached Bright River, there was no sign of any trains. He thought he was too early, so he tied his horse in the yard of the small Bright River Hotel and went to the station house. So we talked about stations on the Underground Railroad. This is kind of like an airport terminal, except it's a train station. We don't have a lot of train stations around here. We have used to be train stations. Um, or train depots that used to be, but we've converted most of them into something else. The long platform was almost deserted, the only living creature in sight being a girl who was sitting on a pile of shingles at the extreme end. Matthew, barely noting that it was a girl, sidled past her as quickly as possible without looking at her. Had he looked, he could hardly have failed to notice the tense rigidity and then and expectation of her attitude and expression. She was sitting there waiting for something or somebody, and since sitting and waiting were the only thing to do just then, she sat and waited with all her might and main. Matthew encountered the station master locking up the ticket office preparatory for going home for supper and asked him if the 5.30 train would soon be along. The 5.30 train has been in and gone half an hour ago, answered the brisk official, but there was a passenger dropped off for you, a little girl. So, they live in such a small town that the station master knows it's Matthew and knows the little girl is waiting for Matthew. Your prediction was right. You were right. 
So they didn't drop off a little boy, which is who Matthew and Merlo were expecting. They dropped off a little... Oh, that's interesting. I think you might be right, Anne. All right, let's see. Anne of Green Gables. All right, oh, hold on. But there was a passenger dropped off for you, a little girl. She's sitting out there on the shingles. I asked her to go into the ladies' waiting room, but she informed me gravely that she preferred to stay outside. There was more scope for the imagination. She said, she's a case, I should say. So scope, oh, I missed jauntily, didn't I? Oh, geez. Is it out of order? Okay, it is. I'll 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 have to fix it. Thank you. All right, all right. I, I will fix it. So, so far, we think scope for the imagination goes next, right? All right. Scope for the imagination. What would you guess scope for the imagination is? So it's a bigger place for imagination. Sorry, I try to fix these as I notice they're out of order, so I'll have to catch up. I, I'm not expecting a girl said Matthew blankly. It, it's a boy I've come for. He should be here. Mrs. Alexander Spencer was to bring him over from Nova Scotia for me. <laughs> the station master whistled. <whistles> Guess there's some mistake, he said. Mrs. Spencer came off that tr off the train with that girl and gave her into my charge. Said you and your sister were adopting her from the orphan asylum. And that you would be along for her presently. Yeah, hang on. Yeah, we did asylum in the last chapter. So orphan means what? Okay, so it's a person with no parents. Who's your friend, no parents? Nope. So this would be three, this is three, this is four, okay, I'll keep order on mine so I know how to change it. Okay. Can you what? Can you in a minute? That's all I know about it, and I haven't got any more orphans concealed hereabouts. I don't understand, said Matthew helplessly, wishing that Marilla was at hand to cope with the situation. Well, you'd better question the girl, said the station master carelessly. I dare say she'll be able to explain. She's got a tongue on her, that's certain. Maybe they were out of boys of the brand you wanted. He walked jauntily away, being hungry, and the unfortunate Matthew was left to do that which was harder for him than bearding a lion in its den. Walk up to a girl, a strange girl, an orphan girl, and demand of her why she wasn't a boy. Matthew groaned, ugh. In spirit. So he's not groaning out loud, but that's what he's feeling, right? When we're looking at writing yesterday, we talked about how they were feeling, and this is telling us how he's feeling, right? He's like, ugh. In spirit. And turned about and shuffled gently down the platform towards her. What do you think jauntily means?
Nope, this is not Matthew, the station master. The station master walked jauntily home. Quickly, or if I'm if I'm jaunty, I'm kind of in a good mood. He's heading home to dinner. If you're heading home to dinner and you got your favorite dinner going on, you're gonna be like, woohoo! So jauntily means sprightly or lively. So he's going happily, happily home. Or happle, like it's a happy walk. So in this case, he's going happily home, but it's a happy walk. Usually you know if somebody's happy or not by the way they walk, right? Sometimes. All right. She had been watching him ever since he had passed her, and she had her eyes on him now. Matthew was not looking at her and would not have seen what she was really like if he had been. But an ordinary observer would have seen this. A child of about 11. How old are you guys? 11. Oh, ch child of about 11, garbed or clothed in very short, very tight, very ugly dress of yellowish gray wincy. She wore a faded brown sailor hat, and beneath the hat, extending down her back, were two braids of very thick, decidedly red hair. Her face was small, white, and thin, also much freckled. Her mouth was large, and so were her eyes, which looked green in some lights and moods, and gray in others. So sometimes her eyes look green, sometimes they look gray. What do you think wincy is? No guesses. Wincy is a... Oh. Quiet. No, wincy is a plain... It's a plain or twilled... Fabric. So it's what your clothes are made out of. It's a wincy fabric. Um, in this case, it's warm. It's warm fabric. But it's tight. So is tight clothing usually super warm? Yes. Yeah. A lot of times, if it's too tight, it like the air goes right through you. Oh, that is a good question. It takes place. The original version was written. It was actually published originally in. Um, what does yours say? What? It's in the back of the book. Uh, usually it's on the thing, but I don't see my. No, it's the wind. What's the original copyright? No. But the book, but the, I, I will look, because I, I, I have it somewhere. I will look. All right. Um. What? Yeah. I, the. It was originally published before 1988. It was originally published, each chapter was published in a newspaper. So it was published each week in a newspaper, one chapter a week in the newspaper. So can you imagine going to your local newspaper and buying your newspaper so that you can read the next chapter of Anne? Why is Matthew so surprised? So you can do question number, excuse me, one. And you can actually do question number two, because we just talked about it. What does scope for the imagination mean? Um, I get that I did not talk to you guys about races, but I still expect you to use races. races. Uh, ah, I see the newspapers being a smarty pants. Matthew. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you think she got a boy and a girl? She kept the boy and gave them the girl? She think you think she was lying? Ah, we can do number five. Let's look at number five. We've not heard, we've heard part of it. So if you want to get started on number five, draw in color and based off of LM Montgomery's description, you can do part of it. Um, I think there's a little bit more description there, but you could probably do the majority of it there. Well, okay, but I I want you to wait on four, and here's why. It's going to talk about what she's been imagining, so I want you to hear what she's been imagining before I sign number four. Does that make sense? But I appreciate you making the, the observation. Any other questions? All right, we'll talk to you later. Bye.